Good morning, Wednesday morning. I have not vlogged all week. Just kind of landed back from New York, commencement speech over, catching up on the vlog, so it took it a bit easy this week. But today, today's going to be completely insane. Literally back-to-back -back meetings all day from 9 a.m. to approximately 10 p.m., including a meeting with Square Peg Capital, in an Australian VC here in Israel, as well as a high school friend I actually caught up with in the airport, Mitch. You met him in the last episode. Several other meetings, including I-24 and many other things. It's going to be a crazy wild day and a good day to start vlogging again. Next week, sorry, the week after next week, heading to Zurich to do a um, keynote speech at a private equity convention. So that's going to be exciting. And then taking a bit easy with, uh, with traveling. And then I think I have another U.S. trip in October, but more details to come on that. For now, let's start this day. I know it's gonna be a good day today because I have all my meetings right there and I found parking right here. That never happens in Tel Aviv. First of all, let's start from the beginning. When was the last time we met? Two years ago. Was it two years ago? Is it? Something like that. I feel that. like it was 100 years ago. All right. Hey, what's going on? I've lost a lot of hair since then. <laughs> okay. It's funny. You actually came over in the lobby upstairs, and I'm like, and I was looking at it. I was like, it took me a second there. All right. So we originally connected in, in a funny, funny way, and I guess it's ironic because I'm no longer on Snapchat, when one of your employees at the time. Intern, yeah. Intern. Brian? Brian. Now TLV. Uh, great guy. Right. Now TLV. I saw him recently when I went to visit Shahar. Why is the focus being weird? Okay. It's okay. So he, we connected on Snap. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm in Israel. You know, we have this VC, Square Pay Capital. I'm like, what? How? How in the world did I not know about you guys? Like, what is going on? Came in there, we had an awesome meeting. I remember it because it was good energy in the room. I felt it. So that was two years ago. I've since, in many different contexts, heard of Square Peg. You guys have made some incredible investments. You're a partner. Yep. Let's start from the beginning. Who the heck are you? What's your name? Uh, Dan, Dan Krasenstein, okay. uh, Australian born. How old are you, may I ask? 35. You may ask. This is very, very impressive stuff, man, I have to say. Thank you. Very impressive stuff. All right, so give me a little context of just how, because I didn't even know this till this very second, just how ginormous SquarePeg is. Like how many funds, whatever you can talk about, whatever is public information, how yep. big is SquarePeg? We're close to, we've got close to $500 million under management, across three vehicles. It's a lot of gumballs. It's a lot of gumballs. You guys, give me some names that, I mean, you've invested in some ridiculously incredible companies. Give me some names. Uh, so probably the most well-known Israeli company is Fiverr. You know that they're also, not only are they the most well-known, but they're also the, mo the most popular and successful company that fewest people know that they're Israeli. No one knows they're Israeli. People yeah. are like, Fiverr? I use Fiverr. They're Israeli? No one knows. Well, there's kind of no reason to... Right. I just, it's funny. Like, Micha Kaufman and Shai are like the founders. Totally yep. Israeli company. Completely Israeli company. Hyper successful. But yeah, they're totally, I mean, people are just like, really? I know they were Israeli. It's funny. And I think one of the great things about them from an Israeli perspective is, you know, they're, they're a big online business that's managed to keep HQ here. Right. Uh, you know, which right. is... And it's a consumer product. Yeah, and it's a consumer product. That's not... Well, well you know, it's actually interesting. A lot of people think it's a consumer product, but most of their business is Small right. The new, but yeah, the new thing that they that the no 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 no. They, they, I mean, essentially, their their customer base is is eighty percent SMBs. It's the sellers, the, the buyers, meaning the supply of the services. No, the supply. So the suppliers are freelancers, of course. Right. So but but the the, the the consume the buyers of the product are not actually consumers. Really, they're, they're SMB. It's an SMB business. I had, I had no idea that, that was the case. Yeah. So that's most people, that's a common misconception. Most people think it's a consumer business, but you know, it's it's an SMB business, so wow. it's got a lot of similarities to a you know building a consumer. So they also acquired uh, what was the name of the video company? Uh, you love V V V me. Yeah. And then uh, another acquisition, Anco, just recently. Oh, cool. So they're doing yeah. Fiverr Pro now. They're doing a lot of cool stuff. Absolutely. Listen, I got to tell you, like. You know, I, I've been fortunate over the years to be able to uh, gain access to amazing entrepreneurs in Israel, but, I, but Micha is at the, like, uh, uh, right at the top of the list in terms of, fantastic. and Shai, I mean, yeah. you know, they, were, they had that, um, I don't know if you saw that graphic last week of all the Israeli founded unicorns, did you see that thing going no, on? No, I didn't. It's not Israeli unicorns, but Israeli, but com unicorns founded, founded by unicorns Israelis. are billion dollar companies, it was unicorns founded by Israelis, including WeWork, including yeah, yeah. I think there were two, I don't remember who the second one was, but Shai was the only, one of the only ones there with two unicorns. Nice. You know, it's like, it's wild. It's unbelievable. I mean, Lemonade, I mean, it's, it's Shy is like, all right, anyway, well, you've met Shy before. Yeah. All right, so, not you. I know you've met Shy. You've met Shy. 
you guys, like you said, half a billion dollars in, in fund Sachako around, let's, let's say half a billion dollars. Yep. Um, you've made since your 2015 launch in Israel. Yep. How many investments have you made? About seven, about a hundred million dollars. You're looking to deploy more. You have more money in the bank, you're looking to deploy. We have a fresh fund, we're ready to go. If an, inv if an entrepreneur is watching who, let's say, either knows Square Peg, but wasn't sure if it was relevant, or didn't know Square Peg at all, what are you looking for? Okay, so we're, we're, we're predominantly an A and B round investor. We're, we're, we're pretty multi-industry. Multi uh, so we don't really do biotech, life science, med devices, those kind of things, but okay. the core, if software's your core. Love it. Uh, and then amongst the team, we're, we're pretty diverse. So I think Israel's a really good uh, example of, of Square Peg's diversity. So we do, we've got some very very deep technology business here for kind of storage market infrastructure. Uh, and then we've got marketplace businesses like Fiverr, which are, you know, obviously have a lot of tech behind them, but not, not deep tech. Important to mention, by the way, sorry for interrupting you. Please. Oh, guys, this is my ADD. This is your show. Yeah, oh, it's my ADD, but my, the back of my shirt says my, about my ADD. But anyway, um, important to mention, very important to mention who your partners are. I mean, you yeah, have absolutely. crazy partners. Yeah, so in Israel we have, uh, we've got two other partners in Israel. One's uh, Arad Naver. Arad's been in the industry forever. Multi, you know, three-time entrepreneur, sold his business to Cisco, briefed in at Sequoia in the US, and then benchmark here for 10 years. I mean, let's just repeat that. Successful entrepreneur, then Sequoia US, and then benchmark. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. He's, uh, he's, he's, Incredible. he's top shelf. Arad's been with us since, since day one in Israel, since the end of 14. And then Ellie Novestern joined us about 18 months ago. Uh, Ellie comes also 10 years in the industry, originally Canaan Partners, and then after that, Patango. So I, also I, relatively... Uh, I have a man crush on you, Zarshai. So they, Love uh, Zarshai. So, Love it. So Izar was, uh, was Ellie's first, uh, first foray. Izar is amazing. Such an amazing dude. And, and it's funny. I just tell you, me and Izar, our relationship is actually the perfect manifestation of the way that people can differ in their opinions. Like we don't see eye to eye on so many things, but I love the guy, I have so much respect for him. And I wanna believe he is, it's mutual. You start correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, okay, listen. The bottom line is like this. You're looking to deploy capital, you're looking A and B rounds, you're, you're, there are certain industries that you mentioned that you don't go near, but the bottom line is you're pretty agnostic. You're pretty, you know, let me ask you this. I'm gonna put you on the spot now, may I? Please. If an entrepreneur is watching this and they wanna get in front of you, whether it's for a cup of coffee to pick your brain because you have a lot of knowledge or to get, get you their investor deck, what's the best way to get it to you? Look, I, th I think the best way always in this industry is, is to find a warm intro. This guy here. Happy to do that. Anybody, listen, I'll filter it out for you. You, you know me, I'm not, I'm not gonna send you garbage. And if you, if you, if not, why is the camera like, you see that it's tilting? What is going on? It's super bizarre. If we lean like this, we'll I don't know why. It's like weird. Again, if you have something that you think is legit and it's relevant, by all means, send it to me. You could send me a two liner and a deck, and I'll forward to this guy and I'll ask him if it's, by the way, let's talk about that for one second. Intros. Let's do, you gotta do it right. By the way, I, this camera is like freaking the heck out. I don't know what is going on. Stay still, camera. So, intros, right? Don't send the guy a cold email and don't, you know, send me an email that, you, you know, you, to him that you want me to focus. Just send me a two line email. Hi, Hill. I wanna meet him. Here's my deck. Here's one line about me. Can you please make an intro? I'll then forward it to him. I'm not gonna make an intro without asking. Double ask him. I wish, must, must double up there. I just wish more people do this. I can't, try, I can't even tell you the, the stories I have every I made like, I think on an average day I probably make 80 intros. And I'm not even exaggerating, it's ridiculous. Because listen, at the end of the day, I, I fundamentally believe that the core of business is, you know, helping others and making these connections. And you know, if I send you a good deal, you win. The entrepreneur wins, it took me 10 seconds. So why would I not, right? Yeah. But people have to do it right. Because if I have to make 80 intros, write the intro every day, then I can't do anything else. So, so write it for me, let me forward it. I think the two core things of intros are double, double opt in. Yeah. So make sure, you know, both oh, parties are. Oh. And then relevance. Just there's just no point making you relevant. I gotta tell you a story. Someone made, I'm not gonna name names. I'm not gonna name the name of the company. Someone once made an intro to a top executive, very large tech company, and they said literally the e email intro was, "You guys need to talk." Now I assumed that that person had spoken to the exec and said why they need to speak to me. Yeah. The exec assumed that I knew so, why we needed to. Talk. Yeah. So we get on the call. This is how the conversation went. Hi. Hi. How can I help? What do you mean? How can I help? How can I help? <laughs> what are we talking about again? I have no idea. What are we talking about? It was the the most awkward thing on the planet. I had one yesterday. Oh God. Same so phone, almost the same phone call. It is the worst. Yeah. Freaking speak to both sides. Hello, do you want to meet him? Do you want to meet Hello? Yes, make an intro. It doesn't take much. Oh my God, I'm telling you, this is like a pet peeve of mine. I get very, uh, anyway. Bottom line is, send me an email. I'll forward it to him and ask him if it's relevant. But the bottom line is, you're looking to deploy more capital. We are open for business. I love it. And, and it's important to mention, we didn't mention this, it is important to mention, even though, like you said before, it's kind of become a cliche, everyone says the same thing, that you really are looking for a strong team. That's what you're looking for. This is the, look, it, it's the fundamental of our investment, you know, decision making. Right. Uh, and, and part of that is not just, you know, who they are, what their background is, uh, do they have relevant expertise. Right. Uh, for us, it's are they thoughtful, curious, you know, hungry, passionate, but, but then the connection. 
Right. At the end of the day, this is the, the, the relationship between an investor and an entrepreneur is a long-term relationship. Marriage. And if, if, if we don't have you know, shared views on how, where the business is going, shared philosophies on... 100%. Uh, and last question, and then I'm gonna let you go. After you invest, what's your philosophy? How hands-on are you as an investor? So it, it's, really, it, it's really varied both by business type, by stage of business, by, by partner. Right. Uh, but I would say, if, we, if I could sum it up in a, in a line, mm -hmm. we will do everything and anything we can to, to help our entrepreneurs. Uh, at the end of the day, we realize they're in the driver's seat and, and there is a much higher likelihood that they're gonna make us successful than we're gonna make them successful. I actually love that. I, was, I never heard that analogy before, that they're in the driver's seat. I love that, no, because let me, let me again interrupt you. Sorry, man. That's fine. It's up, we're close enough. Here's the thing, right? At the end of the day, this, this is what boggles my mind. Like, forget for one second the cliche, we provide value, we don't, like, it is your, your best interest as a VC to help this company succeed. Yep. They win, you win. Why would you not? If you have access, if you have the ability, if you have the skills, if you have the knowledge to help an entrepreneur take their technology to market in any way, shape, or form, yes, they need to make the decisions. I've had VCs that have made core decisions for the company. Like, don't work with a freelancer. Like, dude, that is not your role in a company to make those yep. decisions. Having said that, if you have value, real value, not tangible, not um, intangible, abstract, you know, blah, 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 but actually, Here's a connection that will actually, you know, help you scale this company. Why on heaven's earth would a VC not make those intros? I just don't understand. No, so we'll move heaven and earth. I think intros are a, a massive part that's for both for business dev and hiring. Do no harm is, you know, there are countless stories of investors who have yeah, broken okay. businesses. That story, um, crazy stuff. Do no harm, pretty, uh, pretty All right, man, place. this is awesome. We should not wait another two years to do this again. Fantastic to connect, I love it. And listen, man, anything I can do to help you in any way, shape, or form. We talked about marketing. You know, if you want, I'll come in there and I'll sell my tuchus off, as they say, to your partners. So the reason, not, not as a vendor, I don't, I don't make money from this stuff. You know that, I don't know strings attached for me, but why they should differentiate themselves with a strong brand. And again, you know, Square Peg has a strong brand, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of things that can be done, whether it's a podcast, whether it's video, whether it's, in, you know, giving entrepreneurs a stage, a lot of things we talked about. There's a lot of things that can be done that with all due respect to all the different VCs out there that are doing content, there's so much left to be done. And if you guys do it now, you'll win in my opinion. You're already winning, but you'll win even big, bigger. So bottom line is let me know how I can help with anything. And Appreciate I'll just it. keep sending you deals and uh, yeah. It's gonna work. Keep kicking butt, man. Thank awesome. you. Thanks, dude. Cheers. All right, and today's a marathon. It's a crazy day. Half an, every half an hour, another meeting. So this is like a super interesting story. I think the way we met is like super interesting. So I'm at Ben Ratzon's office a couple of weeks ago doing a podcast and Yuval was sitting in the back there like on a beanbag, just chilling and I'm like, who's that back there? And Ben's like, she is like a big freaking deal on Instagram. And then we connected on Instagram and you're like me in fitness. You're like, I'm the tech dude. You're the fit, you're like huge on Instagram. How many followers do you have? 46. 46. 46K. 46,000 yeah. followers. One day, I want to be you when I grow up. All right, who are you? What's your story? What's your name? I'm Yuval. Yuval, okay. I'm 23. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you've done a lot for 23 year old. That's highly impressive. <laughs> that is highly impressive. All right, so you must have been like doing this fitness thing for the past like 15 years. Yeah, pretty much. Just for two years, <laughs> actually. <laughs> two years ago. Two years. Give me the story. Hit me. What's the story? I used to live in Beersheba. Right. And uh, I was really bored. I didn't know what to do with myself. And I just started working out. Okay, and then you're like, I'll put a camera down, I'll just film myself. Yeah, I got out. really bored and didn't know what to do with myself. And I'll just, yeah, let's just film it. Let's film my workout. And I started putting it on Instagram and I got like like two views or three views on my videos. And it's like, where you all start small, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and then I got like snarky comments and all that. And um, haters. And like two months later, I have. 500 more followers and like 1,000 views on my videos. And I was like, okay. There's something here, there's something here. Maybe I'll keep doing that. Okay, and so now this is what you're doing. Like you're, I mean, you're, you're also a uh, fitness coach and you're, you're training yeah. people, you're working I'm with a, companies, yeah, right? Yeah, I work with companies. I'm a personal trainer and that's what I do. I do Instagram. What's your Instagram <laughs> account? U of T. U of, with an underscore. U of T with an... Uh, U of underscore T. Yeah. Follow her. Yeah. If you're into fitness. And yeah, I mean, you get like thousands and thousands of views on your pictures and on your stories and it's it's incredible. So we already established that our next meeting is you teaching me how to hack Instagram. Right. Are you verified? Not, not yet verified. No, no, yet. Uh, is there any way to like request verification on Instagram? Because I'm verified on Facebook, I'm verified on Twitter, I'm just not verified on Instagram. I have no idea how that happens actually. I think Instagram is like, they, they like do the next level. The next level, okay. Because <laughs> uh, I'll tell you the thing, like I just said to you before, like it used to be in business meetings, people would say to me, oh, how many followers do you have on Twitter? Today, all anyone cares about is Instagram. It's unbelievable. So, you know, if you 
continue at this pace, like you're gonna be able to build a massive career from this Instagram thing. It's unbelievable. Okay, so the bottom line is like this. We're gonna do it with another follow-up meeting, but number one, you're gonna teach me how to use Instagram. Number two, perhaps we can discuss you getting me into shape. Maybe we'll discuss that. But yeah, more we gotta do that. We're gonna, I mean, I'm a little bit lazy, but I know it's like totally on my on my list of things that I just gotta like check off. Uh, vlogging was the last thing that I had to check off on my list. So we started with that, so uh, we're gonna do the, the workout thing. But um, most importantly, we're gonna get you into tech company because you work with companies. You come into their into their office, which is like you know a lot of room, a lot of space, and they have somewhat of a flexible schedule. And you're like, let me train you. Right. So I feel like every tech company, every startup out there, as part of like their, let's call it, perks. You know, there's all these kind of perks. You have refrigerators and chocolate. Bring in a trainer and right, train like the employees. Right, you have a table and all this. Yeah, that's, have to, that's, that's that's stuff is, that stuff is stupid. <laughs> Bring in a trainer. Right. Train the employees. It's really, really cool. Do you have a website that I asked you to discuss Not this? yet. Okay, we yeah. gotta do this. Wait, listen. We're gonna do this. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna embarrass you now. We, we, you are clearly extremely talented and successful at what you do. There's a couple of things I need to teach you though. Right. So I, That's true. I'm, I'm gonna embarrass you now. So when we met, I was, we were Instagram messaging, and I'm like, "You out? Send me a calendar invite." She's like, "What's that?" So like, because you're not in tech. In my world, I live on my calendar. So the next thing is we gotta get you on LinkedIn. Right. We gotta get you on LinkedIn. Like, she, again, she's you know she's 23 years old. You're starting your career. Like you no, let's say no reason to be on LinkedIn, but now you do. That's the second thing. And then the third thing, you must have a website. Like you gotta have a website. That's true. No, like if I come to your website and I understand what you do like that, then I'll hire you. But if I look for you on the web and I can't find a website, and you're not on LinkedIn. Like it's, it's difficult. Yeah. You're Right. All right, so this is a this is a good um, this is a good situation. I'm gonna train you on LinkedIn and website. You're gonna train me in uh, on Instagram and I'm getting into shape. Right. It works. Let's do this. Love it. Fantastic game. Pleasure doing business with you. I'm running my next meeting. We're gonna have a follow up meeting and meanwhile until our next meeting, if there's something else that pops in here that I can help with, you let me know. It's good. We, uh, Instagram messages are boom, but it's very good. I like it much better than email. Uh, but let's let's uh, this is a kickoff meeting. We'll continue the conversation and meanwhile speak to speak to Ben about uh, about building a website. Maybe he knows somebody can do it for you and you can collaborate with or something. I don't know what. Oh, cool. Cool. Awesome. Fantastic to finally meet. We'll do it again soon. Bye. Very cool meetings this morning. Now heading to Mitos to meet someone who reached out through my website. I have very little, basically no context of what we're discussing, why we're discussing it, what we're meeting about. And truth be told, I don't like meetings like that. So I have a little bit of a strange feeling about the upcoming meeting. Don't know what to expect. I'll update. Yeah, meeting's over and um, lack of context in a meeting is always problematic. I'm watching what I say here. Nice people, but uh, an utter waste of my time. That's being being nice. They don't know how to build a company. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they need. Just a waste of time. I hate meetings like that. Now off to I-24, going live in 40 minutes. Just got word from I-24 that I'm going on earlier today, so I'm going on in 15 minutes. The three stories I'm talking about today are secret code found in Lyft's app, by the way, which I started using recently. I've officially abandoned Uber because they suck. Maybe I'll expand on that a different time. But in the Lyft code, they found a hint of them facilitating scooter rides. So you can expect to see that soon. And Tiny Tap, an Israeli startup that raised $5 million for a teacher-student platform. And Apple being fined for bricking phones. Those are the three stories going live in 12 minutes. Getting mic'd uh, up by this good looking guy. Da, da, da. Uh -huh. I'm the good looking guy. Wow, you were born for video, man. Thank you very Love much. That. I was born for video. Real deal. Yeah, maybe you should just replace me. You want to just take the camera here? Just take it. Uh, thank you very much for that. And now we're going to get this handsome dude into the. Your check is in the mail, man. Yeah. The check is in the mail, yeah. That's how I like it. Okay. Going live in three. We gonna have a good time today? Of course, we always have a good time. Sure, it's true. We don't know any other way, no yeah, fools. I'm talking about. Camera away, we're going live. To the fool, to the fool, yo, yo. Oh, she's rapping. Fool, who's oh, fool? Hello, fool, they're back from New York with tech news. Hello, hello, we missed you. You yeah. just travel all the time. We can never keep track. Where in the wall world is Hills Fooled? You can do some more rapping. That was great rapping. You yeah, really? No. Yeah, I, I right. definitely uh, <laughs> found the right career, and rap is not it. Okay, so let's talk about Tiny Tap and why it's so promising for youngsters and parents like us. Sure. So Tiny Tap, Israeli company, just raised five million from Aleph, one of the top investors in the country, if not the top. Uh, what's interesting about this 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 startup is that kids are spending an in 
obscene amount of time on their phones. It's ridiculous, as you know, as I know. Mine have not been introduced yet, like because okay. I know it's a downhill. It's a real problem. Straight downhill from there. And what they're doing is saying, we're not going to take you away from your phone because that's just not going to happen. What we'll do is that screen time will turn into an educational experience. And basically, they're enabling teachers to create games for their students. I just came back from New York. I actually transitioned away from Uber to Lyft because I have not had good experiences with Uber. I started using Lyft. It's actually pretty great. But they, their uh, code and their app, they just found discovered a secret hidden code for what's to come, which is bike sharing and scooters. Everyone's talking about this kind of new phenomenon. It's a big space right now. Mm -hmm. If last year all was about, you know, car sharing, now everyone's talking about scooters and, and bike sharing. And so they haven't yet acquired a company. There's a lot of rumors, but it's already built in and in their code of their app. You see kind of an instance of uh, bike sharing and scooters, and so there's pretty much no question, once they've already implemented that code, that it's to come. Apple, getting slapped with a big fine in right. the land down under. So Apple, uh, what they were doing was, uh, consumers in Australia were coming in saying, well, our phones were bricked, and they said, well, you used a third-party uh, provider to fix your phone? Sorry, we can't fix it, and that's against consumer uh, laws in Australia, so they were slapped with a massive fine now, and you know, Apple's very closed in terms of repair. You can't open the phone, you can't switch out the battery unless Apple does it itself, and if you do it yourself, we go to a store that does it, your warranty's void. Thank you very much. Thanks. Fun. How was it, Emily? You're good, as always. Thank you. You're See you next week. Email I, sent you. Let me I have it. It's in my inbox. I'm on it. See you next Wednesday. We still have to do. We still have to do coffee, Emily. Huh? We still have to have coffee. Let's do it. Let's do it. Good air conditioning in there. No good air conditioning in here. It is hot. Very, very hot. And I'm going outside where it's 50 degrees hotter. Good times. Okay, leaving Jaffa now, heading back to Beit Shemesh. Have several meetings there tonight. But first, look at Jaffa. All right, made it home. Two more meetings now. A call with Adar Zango, head of Portfolio Operations Iconic Capital. She's kind of a very big deal. Two different people introduced me to her. Very excited to talk to her. And then I'm going to dinner with Mitch, who you met at the airport last week. Went to high school with the guy I haven't seen him in a long time, except for the airport. Grabbing some steaks here in Big Chemish. And then I'm gonna call it a day. Now, a meeting. Incredible phone call with Adar Zango from Iconic. Clark, thank you for that intro. Love you, dude. We already knew that. Now heading to a new restaurant here in Big Chemish called Meat and Meat. See what they did there? And then one more meeting and calling it a day. Kind of love this time of the day. Sun setting. Beautiful weather, it's finally not hot. It was a thousand degrees today. Anyway, if today was bonkers busy back to back all day, tomorrow's exactly the opposite. I think I have three meetings throughout the day. Very excited to get actual work done and I have back to back meetings. And uh, then it's Thursday and the weekend. So yeah, good stuff. See you tomorrow. Não fica, não fica